I've had this idea circling around in my head for a little while that I wanted to share with you, but I haven't quite found a way to put it into words, which is somewhat ironic because the idea goes something like this. Just because you can't articulate something doesn't mean you don't know it or something like that. I don't know. I'm still trying to articulate it. The reason that I wanted to share this with you is because I know how easy it is to get down on yourself, to get down on myself when you look at the landscape of incredibly talented people out there who are able to articulate exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it that way, especially in filmmaking. But the truth is that is not the case for me. I really struggle to find a way to take what's in my mind and <laughs> send it out of my mouth. See, most of the time, my mind feels like this whirlwind of ideas and imagery and it's all circling around and colliding into each other and it never feels like a string of words or sentences. It never feels like a thing that I can easily articulate. Oh, and don't worry, this is a an editing tutorial. I am gonna show you exactly what my editing workflow looks like for a lot of my ideas and specifically the intros to my YouTube videos. It's just not something that I can easily put to words, certainly not um, a few short words. And so with all of that out of the way, I want to dive into an effect that I did in my last video that not a single person commented about. All right, so let's open up our timeline here. Everything IG story, projects, good one, real one. That's probably the one. This is the effect that I wanted to show you. And I'm gonna break down not only what I'm doing, but what the process looked like along the way to get us to this point. If this is the first time you've ever seen Yep, that's it. That's the entire effect. And that's kind of the point because there's a lot going on here. All right, right here we have the raw clip. And when I say raw, I don't mean raw. This is actually a, a 2K, basically 1080p clip out of the C70 shot in C-Log2. Sometimes I switch it to 2K and forget to switch it back. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to the inspector and put on Canon's official LUT. So that's the, this one here, but boom. Look at that, magic. I also added just a little bit of sharpening here and then you'll see this color grade, which is actually just knocking down this kind of bright wooden thing in the corner that I didn't realize. So my plan was that I was just gonna walk into frame, sit in the chair and give you the information. However, I realized that the focus on this director's chair, which belongs to Kristoff, just drew your eye so much to the C. Benfi in a way that it made that information feel important. What are you doing? This is my show. Do not veer credit to people outside this building. So I had this idea, why not erase Christoph's name and use that backrest of the chair to animate my logo? I usually try and put it somewhere different. Sounds simple enough? Sure. Did it get significantly more complicated? Yes. The first thing I knew I was gonna need to do is erase Christoph's name here. I probably could have finished the grade, exported this image, brought it into Photoshop, used the smart erase, the intelligent, or whatever it is, erased the letters, brought that back in, and it'd be done. However, I, uh, I didn't do it that way. Here's what I did. I start off by duplicating this clip, and this is a little technique I learned from Daniel Schiffer, which is if you option click, you can drag up. Look at that, a duplicate. The reason that I've duplicated this file might seem a bit silly, but um, stay with me here. So I'm gonna start by hitting Shift H, which at least on my computer I set up as hold. So you can see this is now a 0% speed. I can stretch that out infinitely. And what I'm gonna do here is drop the opacity, which you're not even gonna notice because it's the same thing underneath. And I am going to zoom this in. Ready, zooming, zooming, zooming. And I'm just zooming it in until the same color black from this backrest is able to fill the entire background because this chair isn't just perfect solid black. It has a bit of texture. It probably has a bit of grain. And then from there, I'm gonna hit Command-5 to open up my effects tab. I'm gonna type draw for draw mask, put it on top. I can basically cut everything else out and voila. Christoph's name is gone. I could have just left it at this, but I decided as like a slight towards Christoph, rather than just have his name not exist, it's a bit funnier to erase his name in order to put mine in there. Just a, 
a small joke. So using this layer, I am basically one at a time erasing one letter. I actually got the idea to delete these letters and use the built-in typewriter sound effect in Final Cut from my friend Orion York, who's made some YouTube tutorials on making titles and text effects interesting. So check him out as well. So now not only does it feel like Kristoff's name is getting erased, but it feels like somebody is actively erasing him. It's nothing terribly special, but I think it's a bit funny. I also like the quirkiness of not just like dot, 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 dot. I liked erasing the dot at the end, just making it a little bit more, I don't know, unique or something. And the next thing we need to do is grab my logo animation, toss it onto that chair, and we're done, right? Not even close. The next thing I need to figure out is, well, how big is the logo going to be at the chair? So I find it easiest to go here, you know, to the spot where the logo's finished. And I just use the transform tools to kind of like figure out, you know, do I want it to fill? And then you're done, right? Wrong, because if you watch this animation, boop, 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 there are elements here, let's zoom in, right? Where the animation exits the frame of the chair. So th same thing as before, I'm just gonna grab a mask and zoom in here. And I basically am just doing the edge of this chair. Once you've added the mask, now none of that animation is going to leave the edge of the chair. I'm just gonna come up here into my titles, I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer, bloop, put it over top of everything. I'm gonna use my add motion plugin, which I made a video about here. And then we end up with something like this. All right, so we've got our sounds, we've got Kristoff's name gone, we've got the logo in place. We're done, right? Wrong. Here's the main issue, which is as we play it back, you'll watch my hand and body. Will they go not only in front of the chair, but behind all those layers we created? Which makes sense, but it's something we're gonna have to fix. The main issue here is my arm actually swings in front of everything before I get to sitting down. And so I thought, how hard could this be? I'll just duplicate the layer once more, put it on top here, grab another mask, and just mask out my hand frame by frame. Now, if it was a 2018 Jesse making this effect, uh, probably would have worked great because I didn't care about shutter speeds, but I've grown quite fond of the 180 degree shutter rule, which means behind this hand, you can always see the original C dot Benfi letters. So it's usually at this point in trying to pull off an effect that I have to do one of two things, which is either give up entirely and let Kristoff have the limelight for this intro, or I put even more work into it. And that's what we're gonna do. So after a bit of brainstorming, I realized, well, if the arm passing in front of the chair is such a big deal, why don't we just delete my arm? Bring this back to a section of a video before I'm really in it. Again, I'm gonna hit Shift H to hold. Basically, I just need a clean plate of the background, which I uh, forgot to film, so this is what I gotta do. I did get rather lucky, which is that watch my arm here, it goes shoop. <laughs> it disappears for a second. My arm actually, I put the water down and it comes up and it's more or less hidden. So now I'm gonna add this here have my invisible frame, right? Same thing, I'm gonna add a mask tool, zoom in on this, and I'm basically just gonna draw the edges of my clothing, right? So let's use this as an example, boop, 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 and we're back to normal. So basically now I'm just going frame by frame, erasing my arm. And this mask might look like it's hard work, but it's actually not too bad because I only had to do it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven frames. Seven frames is all it took to get my arm passed. And here's what we're left with. I put the water bottle down, clicking forward. I have no arm and it's just my body until right here, my arm reappears and I sit down. Originally, what I wanted to do was make it look like my arm, rather than swinging in front of the chair, went behind it. But you'll notice that there's just no moment where my arm ever goes all the way past the chair, so it doesn't make sense. It would have to like reappear through the chair. How do we solve the problem of going from no arm to arm in a way that never 
touches the chair. And this is my favorite part of the edit. But I've got a family to feed and bills to pay, so give me a minute. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community that offers thousands and thousands of super high quality classes on pretty much anything you could think of. They have so many classes on filmmaking and photography, but they also have classes on things like productivity or meditation, or you could learn to speak a new language on there if you really wanted to. And I think that's amazing because that means it's a resource for you to just like load your toolkit up with lots of different tools to move forward in life with. With all that in mind, I would still like to point you towards a class that my friend Sorel Amor made called YouTube Success. Build an authentic channel that's worth the follow. And what I love so much about this class is it's not your standard hack the audience, beat the algorithm, you know, grow, grow, grow. You're gonna go so much deeper than that. This is a class that makes you really ask those why questions. Why am I making these videos? Who are these videos for? And how do I use my own voice when I present to the camera? It is a great mix of both self-reflection and then also practical tips in order to help you move forward with that. It's just good stuff, honestly, it's good stuff. I love that Skillshare is a platform dedicated to learning, dedicated to helping you grow. And they're adding new premium classes constantly. And for just $10 a month, you get access to every single one of them. And if that wasn't enough for you, the first 1,000 people that click the link down in my description right now are gonna get a free trial. That's access to everything they've got on their premium membership uh, for free. You just get to have it. So click that link down in the description and thank you, Skillshare. I don't know exactly where this technique comes from, but I got the idea from Kevin Perry, who is an absolutely incredible animator, visual effects artist, just very, very inspiring dude. And one thing that I learned from his videos, and in particular, his How I Made It, his tutorial videos, is that you need to give your viewer's eye something to follow, even at a subconscious level. So what I'm gonna do here is add a blade here. And once again, I am going to duplicate my background. And the gist of what I'm gonna do is I am going to take another mask tool, put that on top, and I am going to draw out this hand in much more detail than what I'm showing you right now. So now I've got my mask lined up around my hand, but what are we gonna do here? So basically all I've done is I've added a keyframe so that it's over here and I've added a keyframe so that it's right before where it's gonna line up. Now what happens is this. So now we have the motion where it's no hand, Hand comes out, connects to the real hand, and I sit down. But there's still the issue of a floating hand in front of my arm. So as silly as this is, I'm gonna once again put this into another compound clip. Another one? And I'm going to add another mask onto this. Another. What I'm doing with this mask now is just following the lines of my body, right? So each frame, I'm just making sure that it stays along the edge of my shirt so that rather than it being in front, uh, it appears as though the arm is coming out from behind until it connects. We can turn our adjustment layers of color correction and that zoom back on. We can put all of our sound design back under there. And in the end, we end up with something that looks like this. If this is the, and that's it. It's a pretty seamless effect. It only takes about six seconds of the video. No one noticed it. And yet I'm incredibly happy with the result because two things happened. One, I was able to put myself into that flow state of edit, which inevitably makes the rest of the edit easier for me. But more than that, what it did is that it gave me the opportunity where each time I ran into an obstacle or an issue, I was kind of able to mine my subconscious for lessons that I've learned over time and see what things I could use in order to solve these problems. So I don't, I mean, I still don't fully understand this video yet, but I, I did want to encourage you that just because you don't necessarily know what or why you're doing things the way you are does not mean you're doing it wrong. It does not mean that you're any 
worse or less talented or less able to move people with your videos. I don't know, maybe next time you feel like you don't know that much, go make a video, spend some time in the edit, and you'll be surprised at how many things are working at a subconscious level. Anyways, thanks for watching. I think you're pretty cool. Like and subscribe? Yeah, like and subscribe. Love you, miss you. Bye.